remove the undercarriage splash shield, there are seven bolts, 12 millimeter socket, and you're gonna start in the front or wherever you wish to. There's three, there's two in the front, two off angle, one in the center, and then two in the back. And there's remove them. So now we're gonna remove the splash shield in the front underneath the radiator support. And there are two that I can see right now, one and two. They're T20. So we're gonna take these bolts out. So in each fender well, right in front of the tire, you'll see this little quarter panel. Just gonna, has a clip, you're just gonna pull down on it. That way you can expose this and pull on this tab. Do the same on the driver's side. Pull down on that tab. So now with the quarter piece pulled down, up inside on both sides is a one bolt with a 10 millimeter head on it. So you need to take both of those down. And then on the other side, do the same thing. Now just grab the plastic, pull it down. So the drain to the radiator is located on the driver's side, right below or in front of the lower radiator hose. And it is a deep socket, 13 millimeter. And we'll just put it up there and it's plastic so it shouldn't take a lot of strength. And just back this off. Make sure you have a catch pan direct, directly below. And you're gonna start draining that coolant. So while I'm having the radiator drain, I'm gonna remove this upper radiator hose and start working my way across. This actual hose clamp is an eight millimeter or a 5 sixteenths socket or flat blade. I'm gonna loosen that up and just bring it down out of the way. See if we can wiggle this upper hose off. There we go. Just put that up out of the way. So now I'm gonna start removing the turbo air tube and the mounting bolt is a T25. That's a Torx bit right here on this rubber mount right there. Get that right out of the way. So then I'm gonna follow this down and I'm gonna take that hose clamp off where it meets the intercooler. This is a seven millimeter socket on this clamp. Almost coming off. So I should be able to grab this and just pull on it and twist. Nice. There we go. Perfect. So now we have to take this air vent out of the air box and out of the underneath here. So it's just basically a grab and pull. Get it up out of the way. So now we have to get all these harnesses and any hoses off the top of the fan shroud. So we're going to follow this main harness over. Looks like it goes up over here. That goes to the car. So let's push down on this tab. Take that harness out. Pair of needle nose. I'm gonna grab the back of these little plastic ears that push in, and release them that way. So I can guide this stuff over. And then do the same with a plastic trim tool. I'm gonna pop this one out. And the sensor right here, just rubber mounted on these bushings. No need to take these two screws out of the way. Just grab the push it right out of there. Matter of fact, we're gonna probably disconnect it. So you push down on that metal tab and pull that out. So this harness is part of the vehicle. So I'm gonna cut these little ties that someone connected here. We'll just put new ones on when we're done. Okay. Got another connector right here. There we go. 
push down on this tab and pull. And as you can see, the harness runs right down the plastic shroud. And they have these little ears set aside for it. I'm going to take this connector off, even though I don't really need to, but I have to because, unfortunately, the harness that's in the way runs around it. This is going to go with the actual shroud. Let's get the harness up and out of the way. Looks good. Now we have the overflow hose. Pull that out. We get two mounting bolts here. So it's a 10 millimeter socket. Let's get So straight down below on the radiator side are two ears that sit up like this and this fan shroud slides in it just like a book. I'm just going to pull it right up, get everything out of the way hopefully. So this is an automatic transmission so you have two Transmission lines going into the radiator, one down here and one right here. These plastic green tabs, you're going to squeeze them and pull and twist. Just like that. Pop them right out of the way. If you have any rubber boots available, you can put them over the thing. Might be uh, worth your while. This bottom one might be easier to get from the bottom, but we'll try from up here. It's got the same tabs on it. So I got it from the bottom. Much easier to get at. Make sure you have a catch pan. So now I want to take the lower radiator hose off, but you can see this clamp is pretty rotted. This is supposed to be an eight, I mean a seven millimeter socket and a flathead screwdriver. I've tried both and I can't even get them to start. So I'm just gonna get my cutters and just start working at it because you can see it's pretty rutted. I don't want to take a cutting blade or anything because I'm gonna reuse this hose. So I end up getting it because it is so rusted. Broke right off. Discard that. I'm just gonna grab that hose and catch it in the drain pan. There should be some residual. You've got four of these bolts, one here, one below it, and the same on the opposite side. And this is where the radiator actually mounts up to the intercooler. It's a 10 millimeter socket. And we're gonna take the two top ones off and raise it up and get to the bottom. So here's the one on the bottom of the passenger side. And they're pretty rusted from the weather. Uh, it's supposed to be a 10 millimeter socket. Let's see if we can get one to fit on there and break it free. And now we're on the driver's side, and here is that one up there. Pretty rusted in the same. Let's see if we can get the rust off. Get a socket on there. So you have these two screws right in here. This holds the AC condenser to the radiator on the bracket, 10 millimeter socket. So now we have to disconnect the overflow from the hose from the top of the radiator here to the expansion tank. And these are permanent clamps, so we're gonna cut them off and we'll have to replace them with like a little small clamp. So we gotta get in there somehow and get them off. Maybe 
you. And just take the inner cool hose off the driver's side. I've already taken off the passenger side, so now we'll just take the the cooler air hose off the driver's side. That's a seven millimeter socket. And we'll just take that clamp right off. Now we have to remove this little plastic guide here because the radiator is going to come down from below, not through up the top. So you can pull on them. Sometimes they're easy. Sometimes you just need to get a little pair of needle nose or a body tool. We'll take that shield right down. So the radiator is mounted by two bolts, one here and one identically on the other side, and it goes up through a little steel bracket with a rubber mount on it and it's a 12 millimeter socket and we're going to take it right down. And then the passenger side. Alright so now I've got all the mounting bolts out. You're going to have to just manipulate it back and forth. You've got training lines on that side you have to go around in a, in a cooler. You have some AC lines you're going to have to Manipulate it around over here. All right, now with you can use two people if you need to. Um, but you might be able to support because the intercooler is coming out with the radiator. They come out together, so you have to se separate the condenser, AC condenser, from the intercooler. And grab the two of those and work that. So passenger side first. Now it's just a matter of getting the, the radiator fill neck past this hose right here. There we go. And then bring out the passenger side. And down. Okay, now before you install the new radiator, you have to take some stuff off of the old. Up on top here, you'll have two brackets, one identical to the other on each end. And there's a bolt, and that is a 10 millimeter socket. And we're gonna just take that bolt right out, take the bracket and transfer it over to the new radiator. do the same to the other side. And you have to remove the mounting bushing and transfer it over to the new water pump. You're going to need two flathead screwdrivers and this, these tabs on the side here. See it right there and one right there. And we're just going to pry them out. I'm going to pry one out and hold it and then do the other side. Then you can pull up on the bushing. And there's those tabs that lock it in. Now we can transfer that over also. Do the same to the other side. Now the new radiator comes with these little flat nuts you see go in there, they slide right in there. The new radiator comes with them in a packet. I'm just gonna take them out and you're gonna put them in the new radiator, because that way, sometimes you can't transfer those and get them out of the radiators, so it's pretty common for these to come with new radiators. And all you do is you'll see that there's a flat spot and a round spot. The rounded edge goes to the out part, and the flat spot actually goes like this. Up against, you'll see little clips inside there. It locks them in. Sometimes I take a pocket screwdriver or just a flathead, push them down. Now we're going to take the old bushing and put it in the new radiator. Just slide it in and it'll lock right in. While we're here, we're going to put the tab on 
Make sure you start it by hand. 10 millimeter socket. Put the other bushing in. Let's line this up. And so you basically you guide that in like that. Make sure that the pattern is facing like this. So the inner bend went into the right center of the radiator. And then you're going to just start that screw by hand. And then once it's snugged, just give it a little tweak with a 10 millimeter socket. Just like that. So now we're going to mate the inner cooler with the radiator again. So just going to lay it down flat on the ground and line up those holes. You've got your four bolts, the long ones. Now the threaded part is in the AC condenser, but we're just going to line them up to help us lift the two together. Just give it some a little bit easier ability. And then you're just going to grab the two together, lift it up, and then you're going to weasel it back up. Now remember the you're going to have to go up on the driver's side first. And then up the passenger side. This condenser is going to go up inside that bumper. And Drain lines got to get out of the way. All right, so it's a matter of getting, making sure that the transmission lines are out of the way, and that now I have to line up the intercooler intake hose at the same time and get the condenser up and out of the way. There we go. you get that condenser up and out of the way, lined up with those four bolts. And we have the two mounting bolts. And you're going to put them right through that bushing. That's a 12 millimeter socket. I have it ready to go on an extension. I'm going to start it by hand. And I'm just going to snug it up. I'm not going to tighten it. So I started that by hand, and I'm ready to snug it up a little bit. Perfect. Now I'm going to tighten up the other three long three inch bolts that go into that condenser through the radiator. So I started this bolt that goes through the radiator, then through the, um, goes through the radiator intercooler and into the condenser. And that were bolts on the back. I started it by hand because I wanted to hold that in place. And that's a 10 millimeter socket. So I'm going to give that a little tweak and tighten that up a little bit. And then that way I can put the other th four, three in. I already have the driver's side lower bolt in that goes through the radiator, the intercooler, and then into the condenser. And I'm gonna line this one up. It goes, it's right here. I don't know if you can see that. You can feel it. Start it by hand. You might have to Manipulate that condenser a little bit. I'm not going to snug this at all because I want to get the other two on the passenger side lined up correctly. All right, so the radiator lines up with the intercooler, and now we have to get that condenser to line up. I'll have to go down below and push up on it a little bit. do the bottom one on the passenger side and we'll snug up this radiator. All right, so now we're going to put the passenger lower one, this long bolt through the radiator and a cooler and then that's the condenser right there. I get a longer socket. The torque specs on this is 
10 newton meters. I'll cross that over to you for inch pounds. All right, so we have solved that mystery. 10 newton meters is 88 inch pounds. So now that I know, I'll bottom it out a little bit sooner. But because there is plastic involved and just the tin clips, and these are such thin bolts, they're smaller than six millimeter, you don't want to snap them. So it would be rather prevent to make sure you do the torque spec that's recommended. Just like that. Torque the driver's side. And now we're going to tighten up, torque the actual mounts. That's a 12 millimeter socket, and that is 25 newton meters, which comes up to 221 inch pounds. And do the other side. So while we're down here, and before we put the cooling fan in, I'm going to put the lower radiator hose on, make it easier. And as you can see, we've got a new clamp, because that other one was completely destroyed. And it's either a flat blade or an 8 millimeter socket. I'll always snug it up with a 8 millimeter just to make sure I get a nice grip on that. Clamps are always smart to make sure you have the hose all the way to the end. And you'll feel the indent. Make sure you have hose showing on both sides. Now I've got an 8 millimeter socket and I'll snug that right up. Now we have the transmission line to put in. I put that boot on there just to stop it from dripping all over the place. Make sure the O-rings are not torn. You're gonna line that right up with that gold insert. Twist and push in. And that green tab should lock on both sides. All right, so now we're back on the top here and we're gonna put our mounting bolts in. Two identical ones on both sides, one there and one on the passenger side. And that's a 10 millimeter socket. All right, I'm gonna snug both of these bolts down. And it is torqued to 10 newton meters. So that would be 88 inch pounds. I'm gonna put my bypass hose on top of this bleeder nipple, which goes on the right driver's side top of the tank. So nice little clamp and we'll snug that in there. So I put a new clamp on and now I'm gonna get my long needle nose with like a little bend to them and slide that on. Okay, so it's a quarter inch socket. So I'm tightening up the clamp on the intercooler air intake and that's a seven millimeter socket. I'm gonna snug that right up while it's easy to get to. Now we can take the transmission line on the upper, take the boot off, make sure the O-rings still look good, line it up, and it will just click right into place. Now we're getting ready to put the electric fan back in, and you see these little guides right here, and you can see the actual clips on the radiator down below. So you're gonna put both of those on both sides on the lower half, got them right in there. You might have to turn the fan a little bit sideways here and there. Make sure you get all your harnesses out of the way. That one went in and this one's in, perfect. And there is, those are those nuts that you put in earlier. And we'll get the mounting bolts for that. All right, so I'm gonna just intertwine the hose where it goes. Almost lines right up with the old marks. And then we'll line that right up with that bolt hole and start our bolts by hand. So I'm gonna put the other side in before I tighten it. and just snug them up by hand. 
So before you put the shield up, always check the drain on a new radiator because sometimes the factory, they just ship them loose. Um, this is a 13 millimeter socket and it was loose. There we go. Don't over tight it, it is plastic. So you want it to bottom out and then just give it a little bit of an eighth of a turn there because it's got a seal and O-ring in there. So line up the holes and you've got those three little tab push pins. Push them in and lock it straight across. So you're going to take your plastic shield that goes under the radiator assembly and put the two front fork-like plastic pins right into that slot that's part of the bumper. So you're going to take this plastic right here, these little forks, and guide it right up into that bumper where that little steel out tabs are. On both sides, you're going to guide those in. Then up here on both sides, you're going to have a little 6 millimeter bolt with a 10 millimeter socket head on it. Go ahead and start that by hand. There we go. Do the same on the other side. There we go. Snug it up. Now we're going to put our each end cap on. So the middle tab folds up into this fender well. Get a little fork thing here that goes right inside there. Like that. So I put this tab in first then push up so that that slides in. Perfect. And now you've got this metal clip in the back right here. That's going to go right up into that. Like that. And you've got your little screw that's going to go in here. And that is a little plastic screw that has a Torx T20 and you're going to start it, snug it right up. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. And then put your screw in, little T20. And now we're going to put the shield up from underneath here and it's five bolts so you're going to line up two in the front here, and then there's one on the side, one in the center, and then two over here. We're going to reposition all these harnesses. So obviously this connector is right here. Connect it. I'm going to fold it over. You get that little dimple that that slides in. This went on here. And actually, here's the connector for it. So let's take that off and put the connector on so we can see what we're doing. So you see that slit right there? That lines right up. So flip it this way and push down on that until it goes locks on. Here we go. All right. Walk our way over. Let's start putting this harness down inside this loom. This is where there was a big plastic tie, so I'll probably do the same. Let's follow this down. On the other side of the radiator, there's some ears on that cover. Here's the connector. We're going to push that push pin right in that little spot. All right, now we can put our turbo air duct hose on the intercooler and put this line on. All right, so I'm going to guide this air hose down in. I sprayed the clamps because they're pretty old and hard to turn. There we go. Let's make sure we get everything in a nice place. So that goes right down there. And that has to be airtight, so you want to make sure that's nice and tight. So the one down here I can get with this tool. Make sure it's seated correctly. Get down there. Seven millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver. Make sure it's snug. You don't want it to be loose at all. Okay, let's get the top one. This is a seven millimeter also. Just gonna snug that right up. 
And then we have this bolt that holds the plastic air dam. It's actually a T25. All right. All right, so now I'm going to replace those ties that I cut off. There's a nice little tab right there on that electric fan. You can run that through. Get one over here. Okay, I'm going to cut the excess off. Now we're going to put the top radiator hose on. It goes right here. Line that up. Make sure it bottoms out. We have the clamp, which is going to be an 8 millimeter or a flathead socket. I'm going to put my power steering hose back. For some reason, that was out. All right, so from this angle, 8, mil eight millimeter. So now we're going to put the air dam from the air box. It gets the cool air into the air box. You'll see the little square right down there. Bottom part of the air box. We're going to line that right up. But first things first, I'm going to try to slide this. I might take this apart right here to make it a lot easier on me. So a flathead screwdriver. Let's pop this piece out. Just like that. I'm going to put this piece in first. You can see where it goes right down in there. Nice. Perfect. Now this is a lot easier to, to guide this one in. And then guide it right in here. And uh, always, once you change a radiator out and it's an automatic, you should double check and top off your transmission fluid. And the dipstick on this car is right here. It's a yellow stick and it says ATF on it. And check your manual for proper fluid that it takes. Now we're ready to add coolant to the system over here on the fill tank. I'm going to take the cover off. You want to fill it up until it's at the fill line. It's going to gravity bleed into the radiator. Just fill it up once it's on the fill line. Replace your cover and run it for 45 minutes. Let the fans come on and let the system burp. There you go. Put the cover on when it reaches the fill line. It should take, you can check your capacity, but at least one and a half to two gallons of coolant.